Welcome, and thank you for attending our webcast today presented by OJM Group. Our topic of discussion today is term insurance and permanent life insurance. We're going to discuss the differences between these two products, the uses of these two products, both the benefits and the cons of these products as well. My name is Jason O'Dell. I am one of the principals at OJM Group, a national-based financial planning and consulting firm with offices around the United States, headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today's topic is an interesting topic because life insurance is a tool that is important for most every one of our clients and is used in many different ways by our clients. So as we proceed through our presentation, my goal is to explain the application of life insurance and how it may best meet your goals and, object and objectives. First, our disclaimer page. This page is here because it is important to understand that when you're going to be working with any kind of a professional that you make sure they have a proper licensing done uh, and the disclosures that they are required are properly in place. You want to make sure any advisor uh, has gone through uh, the appropriate channels to make sure that you're getting advice from someone who understands what they're doing and has done this for a period of time. Our next slide talks about a lot of the areas that we consult in for our clients. Our firm is a multi-specialty firm. We have attorneys, we have CPAs, we have certified financial planners, investment professionals, and insurance professionals that make up our organization. And we consult in many different verticals and areas from asset protection to investment planning. Uh, we spend a lot of time with clients guiding them through each of these verticals and addressing their main concerns. Today's topic falls under the insurance category, which is term insurance and permanent insurance. Life insurance. Well, life insurance is a financial tool uh, that has lots of different uses. This is a tool that individuals can purchase, that businesses purchase on individuals, that is uh, purchased by trust for estate planning. In addition, this is a tool where it has and has afforded asset protection in a number of different states, both not only on the death benefit, but also on a cash value basis. And we'll get into cash value and, and how that works in a moment. Um, it also has on permanent insurance tax benefits for uh, the cash value. The cash values accumulate on a tax-free basis and can be accessed if properly structured on a tax-free basis as well. In addition, the death benefit typically will pass tax-free on to the beneficiaries, again, if properly structured. When you're growing cash values in a policy, you have lots of different options uh, that you can select from how to grow that cash value. It provides, which at the at the core of this product and tool is, is the most important thing. It provides a lump sum payment to a beneficiary in the event of a premature death. Uh, so therefore, you can protect your financial earning potential in the future if you were to die prematurely. Because those uh, funds that we talked about in permanent life insurance grow on a tax-deferred basis and can be accessed on a tax free basis. This makes this tool good from a cash flow uh, perspective for funding retirement, using it to fund buy-sell agreements. In addition, the debt, tax free debt benefit has great use in estate planning and business succession, and as I already mentioned, in income replacement in the event of a premature death. So as I mentioned, there are two types of life insurance, term insurance, and permanent insurance. Let's look at these in just a broad category here and then drill down onto each type 
specifically, and then we'll get into an example of cash value, life insurance, and the economics behind it. The basics of life insurance, you have term insurance and permanent insurance. Term insurance provides a death benefit in the event of a premature death. An insurance company will insure, provide insurance coverage for a specific stated death benefit amount, and they will provide that coverage in the event of a premature death, they'll write a lump sum check to the named beneficiary. It's low cost, it has tax advantages to it, and its primary purpose for being purchased is for death benefit. Permanent insurance comes in a number of different types, and what is the common thread between all permanent life insurance is that permanent life insurance builds a value to it called cash value. How it builds that cash value is what makes permanent life insurance different from each other. There's the types that most people have heard of, whole life insurance or universal life insurance or variable universal life insurance. But the common thread is it has not only the death benefit aspect to it, but also a cash value component to it as well. And we'll get into this, the types and how they build up in a minute. Uh, but if we go to term insurance and just discuss term insurance in, in its basic form is that you would select a death benefit amount that you want to be covered for and you can have those premiums be level for a period of time. Typically it's 10 years or 15 years, 20 years or even 30 years. And those premiums that you're paying for that coverage, you pay for that stated amount of time. At the end of that term or that period of time, the premiums typically increase substantially, and therefore most people cancel the term insurance because it's provided a death benefit for a period of time. Well, application for this is an individual that would want to cover the purchase of their home or while their children are younger, and, and as they get older and or that financial obligation starts to diminish, the need for the lump sum death benefit is no longer there and therefore allows for the individual to cancel the policy. It's like auto insurance. It's a use it or lose it kind of insurance. You pay your premium. If you were to uh, have a premature death, the insurance company writes a lump sum check. If not, they don't give you any money back and you don't build any value. At the end of that term, as I mentioned, the premium can go up and it can go up to a significant amount. The pros of, of term insurance coverage costs are very inexpensive and you can get large amounts of it. And you have relatively low commitment to it because you're funding it only for a short period of time typically. And when I say funding, paying premiums for a short period of time. The cons are pretty easy. The fact of the matter is the coverage will end at a specific period of time. You will have accumulated no value in it. If you didn't die prematurely, then the coverage is gone. Historically, 1.8% of all term insurance policies are ever collected upon because people, the time frame that they need the coverage expires and therefore they cancel the coverage. Uh, you always have the possibility of outliving living the coverage, meaning you live longer than the term or the period of time, which is obviously the case more often than not. But term insurance absolutely has a place in almost every one of our clients' portfolios as a way to manage risk. And it's, you, we do that after we build an economic model to determine how much life insurance is actually needed. It's something we're going to talk about as well in a minute. Let's talk about permanent insurance. So permanent insurance, as I mentioned, builds cash value. And how that cash value builds is what makes permanent insurance policies different from each other. Permanent insurance also has a death benefit. So an insurance company will collect a premium. They'll take a portion of the premium out to cover the cost of the death benefit and the expense charges. The remaining amount of the premium will get invested. How that gets invested and how it grows is what makes permanent policies different from each other. 
the advantage from a tax perspective is that money grows tax free and can be accessed on a tax free basis by taking a withdrawal of your basis so whatever you put in in premium you can access through a withdrawal and then any amount above that you can take out via a loan against the policy and do that in a tax free basis so the big pros for this vehicle number one you've got life insurance that can last for your entire lifetime and will pay a death benefit at your death you have the tax benefits of the cash value growing and the distributions as well as the death benefit it also has asset protection in about 21 states so the cash value is growing and is protected by state statutes so it cannot be attached by creditors in addition you've got the ability to get value back out of the premium you've paid into the policy at the end of a or over a period of time or at a specific period of time in the contract the cons are the premiums are higher than term insurance it's going to require a longer commitment and it's a vehicle that has to be monitored on an annual basis to make sure that it is performing in a manner that will it, that it was originally designed cash value builds up in a number of different ways let's discuss those first there's whole life insurance this is the traditional first generation of permanent life insurance that came out into the marketplace. What happens is, as I've mentioned, the insurance company collects premium, they take their expenses out and their cost of insurance. They then take the remaining amount and the insurance company invests it. And they invest it in whatever they want. You as the insured have no say in where it gets invested. And they'll return a dividend back to the policyholders. That dividend is not a guaranteed uh, percent or an amount, and it can fluctuate from year to year, and it does. And you get back that dividend, and that's how your cash value builds. So you have no say or control. The insurance company controls the investments. Same with universal life insurance. Same exact thing happens. The difference here is you're going to get an interest payment credited to your cash value. Again, no control over it. You have more flexibility with this kind of a policy in terms of the premiums that you're remitting and how you can vary the premiums. The third option is index universal life insurance. And this is the newer type of a, a policy by insurance companies. And what this policy does is it says the investment option or how the cash value grows is going to be tied to an index an index like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones. And how that index performs is how that cash value will build with a floor and a cap on the return that the insured will receive. For example, if it mirrors the S&P 500, they will, insurance companies will typically say if the S&P 500 in a 12-month period of time goes below 0%, they will credit you zero so if it goes down negative 15 your account will get a zero crediting but if it goes up past 10 percent 11 percent 12 percent they will cap that number and each insurance company is different so therefore they will cap the upside so if the S&P goes up 20 percent they would only credit your cash value account 10 11 or 12 whatever they may have but what you get is to select the index you would like to mirror and you get the downside protection with this product with the cap on the upside. The last type which gives the insured the most control over the investments is variable universal life. And with variable universal life, the insurance company again collects the premium and then they give you a list of investment choices, typically mutual fund uh, type accounts uh, or type vehicles. And they say from this list you can select from the 60 or 70 investment options. However, those underlying investment options perform is the return you will get in your investment cash value account. 
So you you as the insured assume all the investment risk. So if you have a negative uh, a performing investment that you're in, your cash value goes down. If you have positive, it goes up in any number in between. If you look on a risk spectrum, the left side of this graph of this chart shows you the more conservative type of of vehicles like savings accounts and CDs to the more aggressive on the right side like an individual stock or an equity. Cash value life insurance falls in the middle. You get more aggressive if you use variable life insurance. You get more conservative if you're using universal life insurance or whole life insurance. And index life insurance is one of those uh, in the middle that really you're not trying to get the returns of, of the equity markets, yet you're not getting the yields of, of the very conservative type of vehicles like CDs or savings accounts. Let's go back through just the tax benefits of life insurance. You have tax-free death benefit uh, that's there if properly structured. You get the tax-free growth of the cash value in permanent life insurance. And you have access to that on a tax-free basis through withdrawals and loans. The determination of how much coverage you need is done based on a mathematical calculation. There's a number of calculators that you can you can use uh, to determine the amount but of debt benefit that you actually need. A lot of times what you need to do is take into consideration what are your specific financial goals and your your current circumstances and situations that allow for a model to actually be built to determine the amount of death benefit you need. That amount of death benefit, a majority of it can be solved by purchasing term insurance. And then a portion of it can be solved by purchasing permanent insurance as well. And one of the things that we like to look at when using permanent insurance is what is the economic benefit of using a permanent life insurance policy. So we look at a chart that shows us a comparison. If I as an individual had $100,000 and I could invest $100,000 for each of the next 10 years, and the amount is just an arbitrary number, it's a large sum of money, it's, it's used for illustrative purposes only. Uh, and, and I could take that money and I could have put it in an investment and I could earn a 6.5% rate of return on that investment and I would pay taxes on any of the gain in that investment either through short-term capital gains rates, long-term capital gains rates depending upon how that investment was taxed and, and, was, and was earning interest in an account, but assume I could put 100 in for 100,000 for 10 years, and then I could take a distribution from that investment from age 65 to age 84. And we're using a hypothetical example of a 40-year-old here. And we're going to compare putting that into an investment and earning six and a half, paying taxes and taking a distribution to taking that 100,000 dollars, putting it into a cash value life insurance policy and earning 6.5% return in that and also then taking out distributions in the future between 65 and 84. So really at the core of this we're comparing how much am I going to pay in taxes versus how much is going to come out for the cost of insurance. And we run the analysis and on our chart you'll see columns 1 through 9 are the comparison of the after-tax investment account. After-tax investment account meaning you pay tax on the money, now you're just investing it in a vehicle and it's going to earn 6.5%. So column one is contributing that for 10 years. Column two is taking out a distribution from 65 to age 84. So you can see starting at age 65 I can pull out $130,790 until age 84, which is 2.6 million dollars after tax that I have. Column four shows a contribution into a cash value life insurance policy of hundred thousand dollars and then taking out in column five distributions. During that same time frame I could take two hundred and fifty nine thousand nine hundred forty eight dollars out or five point one million over that period of time. 
it's a $2.5 million improvement. That money comes out on a tax-free basis. The disadvantage of the cash value life insurance is in the early years, the account value and slash surrender value is less than the amount that is in the investment account. You would have this type of a policy built and put in place if you have a long-term time horizon in mind only. This product works with a 10-year plus time horizon to access the account value and to take distributions out of it. If someone needs money sooner than that, this is not the right vehicle to use for it. It is, over the long period of time, a better option from a pure economic mathematical standpoint. In addition, the after-tax costs versus the cash value life insurance, the expenses, you can see are, on this chart, are greater in the after-tax account, taking into consideration tax and the investment management fee versus what are the costs of the insurance in columns five and six. You can see column seven is the difference, and the life insurance is not as beneficial in the first 10 years, and then it becomes significantly more beneficial to actually yield a $1.1 million savings in expenses over the period of time. The so to summarize, the cash value life insurance policy has significant benefits if you have a long-term time horizon in mind. Next steps. What type of life insurance makes the most sense for you and how much coverage do you need? More than likely, you it may make sense to have both term insurance and permanent insurance as part of your overall risk management portfolio. First and foremost, you need to determine how much life insurance you actually need. That's done by doing an economic model. Here at OJM, we have an entire team dedicated to doing just that for our clients. We would be happy to go through that modeling we, with you, explain it in detail, and give you a comparison between not only what kinds of term insurance policies are out there and make sense for you, but also what are the different permanent insurance policies and do they make sense to you. Feel welcome to contact OJM at any time to discuss these types of policies and what makes sense for you. Our contact information is listed below. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this and have a great day.